Good morning, everyone. I am so glad that you are going to spend some time with us this morning as we praise God, as we glorify Him, as we think about Him, keep our minds centered on Him just for a few minutes so that we can be guided by His love and all that He would have us to do in this particular hour. Today we will be talking about living carefully. And the scripture reading is Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. I had to begin physical therapy this week um, on my neck and um, I have to now be conscious of how I walk, how I sit, how I move because if I'm not, I just slump down. And I started thinking about um, our walk with the Lord. My walk has to be deliberate. Everything that I do, I have to think about what I'm doing before I do it so I won't get into that bad position that causes pain and discomfort. Our walk with the Lord is sort of just like that. We should live carefully, intentionally, on purpose, deliberate. If we don't, our walk, just like my posture, will slump. How do we learn to live carefully? Well, the Apostle Paul tells us here to walk in love, walk in light, walk in wisdom. The first thing he tells us, though, is to follow God's example. We are to be imitators of God. My Bible says that religious persons should imitate the God for whom they worship. Jehovah's Witnesses do, Muslims do, they all do and say the same things about what they believe, and Christians should too. We must be holy as God is holy, merciful as He is merciful, perfect as He is perfect. And most of all, we should walk in the way of love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. We were loved while we were still sinners. Jesus loved those he knew were out to get him. He washed Judas' feet just before Judas set him up. He loved those that no one loved. Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Zacchaeus had a desire to see Jesus, but he was a small man and there were so many people. So Zacchaeus climbed into a sycamore tree. When Jesus reached the spot where Zacchaeus was, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus was desiring the Lord, and the Lord sought him out. So Zacchaeus came down at once and welcomed Jesus gladly. Zacchaeus repented of everything he ever did, and Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Jesus loved the sinner. He wasn't going to Zacchaeus' house just to shoot the breeze, but to seek God's will. Verse 3 says, But among you there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed. Now, everybody knows that about adultery and things like that and, and having sex before you marry, but we never think about there shouldn't be a hint 
of sexual immorality in what we do. So I just put down a few examples. My dress can't be too short for public consumption. Cleavage is for husbands. My walk to my car in the parking lot should not cause men to pull out their cell phones to snap a picture of me. The Bible says not even a hint. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. My Bible says, as people who have light from the Lord, our actions should reflect our faith. We should live above reproach morally so that we will reflect God's goodness to others. God called us to himself to be his people. We are not ordinary people, regular people. We are holy people. Things that others might become involved in, obscenity, foolish talk, coarse joking, these things are improper for God's holy people. That's what the Bible says. Those things are out of place for us. Instead of all that improper stuff, there should be thanksgiving. And this is not about turkey or eating and shopping. Thanksgiving, the expression of gratitude to God. Thanksgiving should be our aura, our demeanor. Grateful to be alive. Grateful to know the truth. Grateful that we have a savior. Grateful that there is food in my refrigerator. Grateful that I sleep on a bed. Grateful should be our attitude towards life, filled with thanksgiving for all that the Lord has done for us and to us. When we follow the ways of the world, we are dead in our transgressions and sins. The Bible said that's where we used to live, but that's not our address anymore. When we follow the ways of the world, we are dead in our transgressions and sins. The Bible said that's where we used to live, but that's not our address anymore. We now live as children of light. Matthew Henry says, a state of sin is a state of darkness. Sinners, like men in the dark, are going where they do not know and they do not want to. But the grace of God had produced a mighty change in their souls. Now are you light in the Lord, savingly enlightened by the word and by the spirit of God. We were once darkness, but now we are light in the Lord. It is shameful to mention, this is what the Bible said and I, and I had never read this scripture before. It is shameful to even mention what the disobedient do in secret when the light is not on them. The fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. A careful, deliberate walker wants to make sure that their path is lit, that it has no rocks on it, no slippery parts. So you want to spend some time finding out what pleases the Lord so your path can be clear. We need to prepare for trouble so we can be ready when it comes. We need to be alert, observing, and discerning. Paul tells the Ephesians to wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. So after Paul has given them a few tips on how they should conduct themselves, he says, 
And these are our focus scriptures. 15. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Carefully, properly, strictly, accurately, even fanatically. Because that's what people say when you get so involved with the Lord that you're thinking about Him all the time. You must be some type of fanatic. But I'm a fanatic for the Lord. Act like people with good sense and not like fools is what the contemporary English version says of that scripture. Christians who want to live carefully for the Lord don't accidentally walk into online meeting rooms with a disobedient hide. They investigate their internet experience so that won't happen. They desire to live wisely. Because with God comes wisdom and truth. One of the commentaries says on walking carefully, finding out the clear line of right and then keeping to it strictly so as not to run uncertainly. Be watchful over ourselves, examining your conduct and making adjustments here and there. When you see something that's wrong, fix it now. Don't wait. We should set boundaries. These are wise boundaries, not foolish ones. Do not walk loosely without fixed principles of action, but make sure that your rules are of a true kind. Many are strict who are not wisely strict. They have rules, but not good rules. I told you a couple of weeks ago that there was a preacher who believed that any Christian who drank went straight to hell. Well, that's not true. 16. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatever you do, do well. For when you go to the grave, there will be no work or planning or knowledge or wisdom. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. A different translation said, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. I want to walk around with a beam, a glow for the Lord. Don't allow your feelings to cause you to waste your opportunity. T.D. Jakes was invited to a prestigious event. He was seated next to a prominent person, a man of influence. The man said something to make Jakes angry. And he said he allowed his feelings to blow an opportunity to set things straight in this person's mind. Pray for opportunities to serve God and then don't blow it. Because the days are evil. Paul was communicating his sense of urgency because of evil's pervasiveness. We need the same sense of urgency because our days are also difficult. We must keep our standards high, act wisely, and do good whenever we can. So I'm just going to end with two scriptures. Colossians 4.2 Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Psalm 128.1 and 2 Blessed are all who fear the Lord, who walk in obedience to him. You will eat the fruit of your labor. Blessings and prosperity will be yours. Amen.